Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're now going to step into negative exponents. Some of you have never seen a negative exponent in your life. You'd be surprised the form that some exponents take. Anyway, this is what 7 to the negative 2 power is. It's 1 over, let me put an equal sign, 1 over 7 to the positive 2. And what is 7 to the positive 2? It's 49, so our answer is 1 over 49. That's what a negative exponent is. We can even see better down here for evaluate the expression 1 fourth to the negative 2 power. We can do this in two steps. First, use the negative sign. The negative sign flips the fraction, leaving a positive 2. The negative sign flips the fraction. You're left with a positive 2. Now, you already know how to handle a fraction raised to a power. You raise the numerator to that power and the denominator to that power which is going to be 16 over 1, which is going to be 16. Now here is something very important. This is negative 6 raised to the negative 3 power. And a lot of people make a mistake by saying, well, negative times negative is positive. Not here. The sign on the power has nothing to do with the sign on the number. This is what we're going to do. This is 1 over parentheses negative 6 to the positive 3 power. Now, what we have to do is get a calculator. And that's what I plan to do. So, I'll pause for a minute. Okay, here I am <clears throat> with my Wabbit Moo calculator. I'm going to say parentheses negative 6, parentheses closed, raised to the third power. Because that's what I have now in the denominator. I just want to find out what the denominator equals. And it's negative 216. So, our answer is 1 over negative 216, and your, your, uh, my math lab really doesn't like, and even math teachers don't like, the negative sign on the bottom. So it's really preferable to write it, to write the answer like this. After all, a positive 1 divided by a negative 216, well, positive divided by negative is negative, so that makes the entire fraction negative. Uh, let me move our friendly calculator here. There you go. There's the answer. That's what you would put into my math lab. Okay. Let's go on. Here we have 3 to the negative 2 power minus 2 to the negative 1 power. Oops, there we are. Right there. So you have 3 to the negative 2 power minus 2 to the negative 1 power. That's going to be 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 2 to the positive 1, which will give us 1 ninth minus 1 half. Now I know how to do this by hand, but suppose you have trouble with fractions. Let's get Wabbit Moo to help us. There. We're going to say, what are we going to say? We're going to say 1 ninth minus 1 half. 
And if you're wondering what that jingling is in the background, it's my dog. Which one is it? It is Blazy. Okay. Now, she's the one in the orientation videos. I am going to, I almost hit enter, which would be okay. We'd get a decimal, but I'm going to say math frac enter. Negative 7 eighteenths should be our answer. Let me write that down. Okay. We'll put Wab we'll clear Wabbit Moo, put him back to sleep for a while, and deal with this situation. Here we have one over two to the negative two power. Well, what this is is one times two to the positive two power. And a one takes the place of this when it moves. Well, that's going to be 1 times 4 over 1, which will be 4 over 1, which is 4. Okay, now, here's a problem, the kind that you'll see very often. Um, don't get concerned about t doesn't equal 0. That's a technicality that we have to say. We have a t on the bottom of a fraction. We have to make sure that we know that t is not going to equal 0 because you can never have a 0 on the bottom of a fraction. So all this is saying is this is a technicality that, that mathematicians have to say. All right, so what is this going to be? This problem is like that problem. You'll have 8 times t to the positive 4 over 1, which is 8t to the positive 4. And that's all there is to that one. Now down here, write an equivalent expression with positive exponents only. All right, well, x to the seventh is very happy being where it is. y is very unhappy being where it is. You could almost say it has a very negative um, personality. This is what it will take to make y happy. There you go. y to the negative five, remember, sends this down underneath. Well, I don't see anything underneath. It's understood that this is over 1. So all you're doing is you're taking y to the negative 5, which is up there, and moving it down here. Okay, now. This printed much smaller than I wanted it to, but I hope it's large enough for you to read. Here we have a to the negative 5 times b to the positive 1 over 5 to the positive 1 times n to the negative 3. Well, only the uh, variables or numbers with negative exponents are going to change place. So this will be n to the third times b to the one over a to the five times five. Now, probably at this point, my math lab would say that's acceptable, but we need to write it the correct way. Generally speaking, we always put the, when you have a variable multiplied by a number, a constant, we put that in front so that it becomes the coefficient of the variable. Uh, here, where you just have letters, we try to put the letters in alphabetical order. So the proper way to write this is b times n to the third over 5 times a 
to the fifth. And that would be the proper way to write your answer. Uh, notice that if you have anything to the one power, we, we don't usually write that one. You need to know it's there, but we don't usually write it. Okay. We have one more page to go. There now. We're going back to the first basic rule you learned, the, the um, uh, product rule. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So that's precisely what I am going to do. I write the base and then I add the exponents. I'll have negative 5 plus 7 plus negative 9. Now you can put that in a calculator or you can figure it out yourself. Negative 5 plus 7 is positive 2, positive 2 minus 9 is negative 7. c to the negative 7, which will be 1 over c to the positive 7. So that's the answer to this right here. Now this, these two problems, fair warning, I have often seen these on the math department's part of the final exam. I would learn how to do them in my sleep if I were you. Here's how you do them. Up here, because you've got two letters in parentheses, this negative 6 is going to multiply the powers on the letter. So, 7 times 6, what is that? It's 42. All right, so we'll have m to the negative 42, n to the negative 6, over m to the negative 39 times n to the positive 2. Now there are a number of ways you could work that, <clears throat> actually. Um, the more straightforward way to work this, I believe, would be to change everything around, but that's not necessarily the quickest way. But the more straightforward way, if you're just starting your career here is to go ahead and move all the all the uh, variables with their exponents around to where the exponents are positive. So we'll have n to the 6, n to the 2, m to the 42. Yes, I know. I said we try to keep them in alphabetical order, but they'll be that way at the end. Don't worry. Meanwhile, up here we're going to have, I might as well put it over here, m to the positive 39, and that's what we have. Okay, because the n came down here. Now, what have we got? We've got m to the 39, that's a 9, over n to the 6 times n to the 2 is going to be n to the 6 plus 2, which will be n to the 8, times m to the 42. Now we have like bases here. We're going to have to use the quotient rule. Okay, now I'm going to show you the easier way to do this. Notice that the higher power now is down here in the denominator. The easiest way to work this is to keep the terms down here where the biggest exponent is and then subtract the smaller one, even though it's on top. Because if you said 39 minus 42 up here, you would get a negative exponent and have to, that would be a negative 3, you would end up moving it down here anyway. So better, you know, you save a little time. This is kind of sort of going to move down here. And this is what we're going to do. This is going to be m 
to the 42, oops, almost ran over, 42 minus 39. There's nothing on the top. Do not put a 0, put a 1. Now, 42 minus 39 is 3, so our final answer, let me draw an arrow, is going to be 1 over m to the 3 times n to the 8. That doesn't look like much of a 3, does it? So let me write it again. 1 over m to the 3 times n to the 8. There you go. That's much better. Okay. And you can replay that if you need to. Let's do this problem. That's the last problem. There are so many different ways you could start working on this problem. Sometimes it's difficult to figure it out. If we notice the parentheses include the top and the bottom here. So we could, if we wanted to, take this negative 4 and multiply it by all the powers in the parentheses. Or we could flip the fraction with that negative sign. There are just any number of different things we could do. But remember order of operations? We should really work in the parentheses first and see what happens. There. Now, if I move everything in the parentheses to where uh, this number becomes positive, I'll have a t on the top, and that's t to the 1, over t to the third, q to the 1 times q to the 4, which will be t over, I'm going to a lot of different steps, a lot of steps, and somebody's texting me. t to the third, now, q to the 1 times q to the 4 is q to the 5. Let me put a 1 on here to the negative 4. Now, remember I said go to where you've got the highest power. We have like variables here. We have like basis, and we're dividing. So we're going to subtract the exponents. Go to where the exponent is bigger and subtract the smaller. So, move this. We're going to have a 1 over t to the 3 minus 1, q to the 5, to the negative 4, which will be 1 over t to the 2, q to the 5, to the negative 4, which will be 2, t to the 2, q to the 5 over 1 to the positive 4. Well, when you've got t to the 2 squared, we would say t squared, q to the 5th power over 1, that's just t squared q to the 5th raised to the 4th power. And what we'll end up with is t to the 8, q to the 20, and I don't need these parentheses because there's no power out there now. That's our final answer, t to the 8, q 
Q to the 20th. Now you can work this different ways and still get the right answer. Okay, in fact one of the best ways to learn the rules of exponents is to um, just go ahead and work a particular problem using as many different orders, um, orders of using the rules of exponents as you can think of. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.